Do you people in this faith community realize just how blessed we are with all the young families and children that we have as part of this congregation that come out to worship? I don't think you do because I hear a lot of clergy who desire and pr are praying for what we have. And I think we really need to give them a good, warm welcome this morning. <laughs> welcome to all of you, both young and old. This is one of those mornings when you've heard me say again and again, it's good to be a part of the family of God. And I pray that as we spend this time together that we will sense God's presence in a wonderful, wonderful way. Our opening hymn is hymn number 58. Now, I think we're short of books as well. And as I said to Millicent, I don't think we've ever run out of books since I've been here. So again, if you can share a book with someone, if you've got one to share, just lift your book up. OK, there are some books to share. If you don't have one, feel free to come and get one from somebody who's lifting one up to you. While you're doing that, I want to take the opportunity to say to the people at Cozy Quarters, Clarenceville Retirement Center, the Dr. O'Manny Center, and all who may be watching by way of East Link, we welcome you this morning. We want you to know this morning that our church is built, and we give God praise and thanks and pray that you'll be as blessed as we will through this worship service. Hymn number 58. Anybody else around with Dion get, oh, Alex is too. 
Okay, come on, brave souls. Here we go. You are here. We have a brother and sister congregation servers giving the cameras already. There we go. Paige, you got a birthday this month too? <laughs>
Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. verses 17 to 25. The Lord says, I am making a new earth and new heavens. The events of the past will be completely forgotten. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. The new Jerusalem I make will be full of joy and her people will be happy. I myself will be filled with joy because of Jerusalem and her people. There will be no weeping there, no calling for help. Babies will no longer die in infancy, and all people will live out their lifespan. Those who live to be a hundred will be considered young. To die before that would be a sign that I had punished them. People will build houses and live in them themselves. They will not be used by someone else. They will plant vineyards and enjoy the wine. It will not be drunk by others. Like trees, my people will live long lives. They will fully enjoy the things that they have worked for. The work they do will be successful, and their children will not meet with disaster. I will bless them and their descendants for all time to come. Even before they finish praying to me, I will answer their prayers. Wolves and lambs will eat together, lions will eat straw as cattle do, and snakes will no longer be dangerous. On Zion, my sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we will be doing Canticle number three, Song of Thanksgiving found on page 76 in the Book of Alternate Services. Canticle number three, page 76, full to, uh, the Book of Alternate Services, please stand. And we will read at the half verse marked by the asterisk. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore, therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 to 15. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tenet, tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread with their paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. 
This was because we do not we do not have that right. But in order to give you an example to imitate, for even when we were with you, we gave you this command: anyone unwilling to work should not be. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly, quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our graduate hymn is hymn number 113, hymn 113.
you turn me up, boys? They are a The right hand. I mean, yeah, I remember. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I see so many of you that I baptized since I've been here coming back to church. And that is absolutely, it, it just fills my heart with joy. It's great. Yeah. Oh, can you feel that day? You know what? I got some extra work for you people to do this morning, so I don't know if I'm going to let you feel the day. I think we'll just look in. I think the last time when Alan was here, he found a sock. <laughs> right, Alan? I have, you don't know where to sit. Well, my darling, you go right there. Look. See that little space there between these two boys? I believe we put you up there. That's a wonderful problem to have in the church. Know where to sit. Right here. Look. There you go. Now, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Are we ready? Okay. Loving God, 
loving God. We thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus. For sending Jesus to save the world. To save the world. We thank you. We thank you for being so big. For being so big. So strong. So strong. And so mighty. And so mighty. There's nothing. There's nothing. You cannot do. You cannot do. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, I know that a lot of you here are really looking forward to Christmas, aren't you? Yeah. And we're going to have so many things for Christmas that you're not going to know what to do with it all. But guess what? Some little boys and girls around the world are not going to have anything.
can see all these boxes that you have given. And they're going to go on a truck and they're going to go way, way far from here to children that you will never meet. But they will open your box and guess what? They'll be happy. They'll be happy. They'll be excited. Oh, look what I've got. I've got crayons. I've got markers. I've got erasers. I've got socks. I've got pictures. And I'm going to go. Wonderful. So we want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you. Do you know what you are? You are to be God's hands and feet to these little children that live far away. So Reed, when you're ready, when you're ready, we're going to line up for Speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that, is, that it is to, about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place, but the end will follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to understand or contradict. You will be, be, you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Loving God, gracious Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be now and always acceptable in thy sight. 
O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Ian, i got to say, I never begin the prayer loving God without thinking about heaven. That will follow me for the rest of my days. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, one Sunday morning as we began our prayer like we did this morning, before I had a chance to speak, Evan led the way by saying, loving God, exactly the way I say it. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Very appropriate, isn't it? On a morning such as this, when we have so many boxes going from here to children who desperately need what we can offer. Do not be weary in doing what is right. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Words of advice and encouragement from today's gospel readings and the other readings as well. In our gospel reading, we hear Jesus' final address of his ministry. Jesus makes the pronouncement about the temple of Jerusalem being destroyed. He also talks about the end of world history but makes it clear that there will be an indefinite time between the temple being destroyed and the end of the world. Jesus also makes it clear to the disciples of his time, and he makes it clear to us, his followers of today, that there will be an end to this world as you and I know it. He warns us about those who will come announcing that the end time is at hand, but that they and their proclamations are false. Every now and again, remember, we get someone who say the world will end on such and such a day at such and such a time. I remember a few years back, it was supposed to start with some big calamity in the area in which I lived in, down toward Newtown Way. That was what Summer was proclaiming at that time. And we can expect that to happen over and over again. Jesus consoles his hearers not to be terrified by war and tumult. They do not signal the end of time, but they are a mocking witness to the fact that the old age has to pass and with much suffering and pain. Now, you and I, I'm sure, in the past couple of days, few days, we've been watching the terrible image and devastation in the Philippines. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure many of you are like me. You go to bed with them on your mind, and you wake up with them on your mind. But that's all being foretold in Scripture. <coughs> Jesus does not mince words in telling his disciples that the cost of discipleship is high. It is not something to take lightly. It is not something for self-gratification, but an invitation to faithfulness despite the many struggles of life that go on around us. Jesus' message is that, as his disciples, we, we can expect trials and we can expect tribulations. We can expect ridicule, criticism, and persecution. So often when these things come our way, we have a tendency to think that as followers of Christ, we do not deserve it. It's very human for us to think, Lord, you know, I go to church faithfully. I read my Bible. I say my prayers. Why is all this happening to me? We wonder where God is in all of it. And we ask how he could allow this to happen to us. We, in our humanness, tend to think that if we follow the teachings of Christ, if we do his will in our lives, we will be exempt from many or all of the difficulties of life. Well, my friend, I wish I could tell you that that's true, but it's not. That is not what Jesus tells us. He is very direct in telling us that our time of discipleship 
will always be a time of trial. Jesus uncovers a whole list of painful experiences in today's gospel. He tells us that we will not only be persecuted, but, this is the hard part, we will be betrayed even by parents and brothers. And I would add sisters. We will be betrayed by relatives and friends. Some of us have already had that experience. These are very harsh words and almost inconceivable for us. To be betrayed by those whom we love? How can that be? Nowhere in the Gospels does Jesus say, come and follow me. You'll be free from all the difficulties of life. Instead, Jesus says there is a high cost in being a follower of his. We must be prepared to put him first, not second, not third, but first in our lives. We must be prepared to carry our cross, not next week, not next month, not next year, but daily. And no matter how heavy it becomes, we must be prepared to carry it. And sometimes, I'm sure, in all of our lives, it tends, the cross tends to be so heavy that it will be so easy to cast it aside and do our own thing. We must be prepared to give up our possessions. We must be prepared for the hatred that we will endure because we know and worship this person called Jesus Christ. Now that's a tall order, isn't it? That's a very tall order. Many times in our humanness we reach a point where we feel it is too tall. And we often find ourselves thinking that we'll never make it. We just can't go on. There's just too many hard experiences coming our way, too many difficult experiences. Many times we feel like giving it all up and we ask ourselves, is it really worth it? And Fred, I'm going to repeat, I will never forget the story that Fred shared, Fred Powell shared with me about when his mother was suffering so much. And Fred, being Fred, said to her mother, how can you still worship this God when you're suffering and going through so much pain? You know what his mom's response is? My son, how can I not after what he did for me? I've never forgotten that, Fred. I never had the privilege of meeting your mother, but her statement has had a profound effect on my life, and I thank you for sharing that with me. Jesus tells us there are times during which we are being given an opportunity to testify. And we don't have to repair our defense in advance. Oftentimes, as, Christ as Christians, we will stand in front of people who will condemn us and criticize us, but we don't have to worry about our defense. The Lord will give us the words that we need. And I had an opportunity to encounter that just last Sunday when someone was leaving church. A moment of criticism. But God gave me the words to say. And he'll do the same for you. He'll give us the words and the wisdom that none of our opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. We also have this assurance that not a hair of our heads will perish. In Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, he warns against being idle. Oh, I don't know about you when you heard that this morning, but I thought about my father. Sure, uh, who read that? Uh, it was Haley. Those who are lazy should not eat. Did you hear that again and again when you were growing up? I did. That's one of the things. St. Paul warns against being idle. And he advises the Thessalonians to toil 
and labor faithfully. He appeals to them that they are not to be weary in doing what is right. And friends, obviously, we in this corner of God's vineyard, we in this faith family, we're doing something that is right. That's why this church is filled today. That's why there's so many young children and so many young families here. In our humanness as followers of Christ, it is often easy to become weary. Oftentimes the way of the world looks so much more attractive. So easy to be somewhere else this morning. We had a confirmation, and I know some of our confirmation pages here this morning. I'm not sure who else is here along with you, Paige. But we had one here at 8.30. A confirmation candidate at 8.30 this morning because he had hockey at 11. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful. The world is so attractive. And it would require far less discipline in terms of how we live our lives. It would require less of a commitment to the things of God and his church, the body of Christ. Many people involved in the life of the church often do grow weary. And, you know, I could name some of them this morning because they've been on the road for a long time doing so much for the extension of God's kingdom. They give so much time and so much energy, so much of their talents. And oftentimes they do get tired of giving. They sometimes reach a point where they feel they are being taken advantage of by others. I talked to a woman on the phone just this week who feels that very way. She's not a member of this church, but she's a member of a church. Many people experience much criticism. As the saying goes, others only look at the one thing that they have done wrong, and they forget the 99 things that they have done right. Life as a disciple of Christ, life in the church, brings with it a big commitment. It brings many challenges. It brings suffering that we experience, and it's all a part of what God has called us to. <coughs> Christ who suffered for us is our example. We must follow in his footsteps. He never sinned, and he never deceived anyone. He, he did not retaliate when he was insulted. When he suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God who always judged fairly. And we are to do the same. As Christians, as disciples, we are called to faithfulness, to trust God, as difficult as it is sometimes, with situations that test us almost beyond our endurance. We are to remember that by our endurance, we will gain our souls. You see, part of our humanity is that we want gratification. We want something right away. We want to be rewarded for what we do right away. In the name of Jesus and in the power of that name, we are called and granted the grace as followers of Jesus Christ to endure struggles. In the final address of his ministry, as Jesus speaks openly about what is to come, about what we may expect as his followers, we must not forget that he is very much aware of what lies ahead for him. When Jesus spoke about that, he knew where he was headed. He was headed to the cross, to be nailed, to die on the cross for your sins and mine. And he remained faithful to the end. He broke the power of sin and death. He broke the power of hatred and fear. And he empowers us to do the very same thing. If we remain faithful as he did, we too will become a part of the glorious new creation that he has designed for us. Now I'm going to tell you, Harvey and I and Kim got a challenging uh, 
Hugh wants to help us with our confirmation class. All the questions. All the questions. And we don't have all the answers. But we thank God that they're asking questions like, what are we going to look like when we're being recreated? We don't know. And like we told them on Thursday, we believe it in faith. My friends, we must not get tired of doing good. We must not get discouraged, or we must not give up. For we will reap a harvest of blessing at the right time, at the appropriate time. Not in your time and in my time, but in God's time. May God continue to bless us in this corner of this vineyard as we continue as we do not become weary in doing what is right. Amen. Father, it's anxious for me to get finished. You said amen before I got a chance. Thank you, Robert. page 52, page 52, as we stand together and in faith, confess what we believe, the Apostles' Creed, the affirmation of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we uh, have our offertory hymn, I just want to remind you that this is the third Sunday in the month, and you will be receiving your envelope reminding of our commitment uh, to paying for the new rectory. To give you an update, right now we owe 100000 Now that's a lot of money, but how much did we start out with? 219000 And we've been only living there for a little over a year. So you are be, be, to be commended for giving regularly, but that's the key, we need to give regularly on a regular basis to make sure that the $1,500 a month, that's what our payment is, can be paid without any hardship or having to have fundraisers and expect people in the community to pay for what is ours. So I impress upon you to be faithful in doing that. And by the way, I have the plans already to send to another parish who wants to build a new rectory just like ours. Isn't that wonderful? Our offertory hymn is hymn number eight. Hymn number eight. <coughs>
we offer up before God this morning the gifts of these boxes that have been so generously and freely given. As we offer up the gifts of food to the food bank and the gifts of our money, we pray the prayer printed in your bulletin. God of constant love, you have guided your people in all times and ages. May we who offer you our praise today always be ready to follow where you lead. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Today's litany is litany number one, found on page 110. Litany number one is found on page 110.
Let us pray for David, our bishop, for Daphne, our priest. And today let us offer a special prayer for Sheila as she, as she prepares for ordination to the diaconate. For all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations, we pray, God, that you will send wisdom into the hearts of the leaders of the, of the nations. We pray for leaders that will raise up and, and lead us in ways that will establish a good relationship with the natural world. That solutions will be found for, for the crises that bring on severe typhoons, for the crises of, of global warming. We ask for guidance. We ask for wisdom. We pray for all the leaders and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this, for these towns, these this towns and villages that are part of the community of St. Mary's, for every city and community, for all those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For good weather, for abundant harvest, for all to share. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For those who travel by air, by water, by land, for the sick. This morning we remember, <coughs> among others, we remember Florence, Joan, Gary, Kylie, Tyler, Natalie, Reverend Jim, Janice, Inez, Claude, Roy, Shirley, Susie, Reverend Kay, Reverend Sheila, Reverend John. Those known to you. <coughs> we also pray for prisoners and captives. For their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Let us remember this morning our confirmation candidates as they prepare themselves for the coming of the Comforter. Let us pray for Adam, Evan, Kevin, Noah, Paige, Ryan, Rebecca. And let us pray for the leaders and those who are their prayer partners, that they will have wisdom and insight to help them in their preparation. Let us pray for the Lord. Lord have mercy. Let us pray for those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Remembering St. Mary and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and the whole and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O oh Lord. Almighty God, who have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear the request. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come to eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And as you turn to your bulletin, and there you'll find the collect of today. In unison, let us pray to God. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkness and ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy. Through the power of Him who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine 
Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, his peace, this day and forevermore. Amen. All the information you need, unless I've forgotten something, is here in the bulletin. Don't forget, we are at the Dr. O'Manny Center this afternoon at 2.30 p.m. There is 7 p.m. evening worship tonight, and we are at Coast Quarters on Thursday at 2.30. Everything else is here if you need. Yes, Jim. Calendars. I added in last week, and I thought you had them all gone. Okay, we have church calendars for sale, and you know, it's, it's wonderful to be able to have a church calendar hanging in your house, somewhere on your wall or in your office. You can tell what day it is in your church year and so on and so forth. Plus, it's, uh, it's in, we don't really make money off that, do we, Pauline? Not really. We just sell it for, you know, whatever. Doing good. We sell it for doing good. So if you don't have a calendar, they're only $5 each. Lots of beautiful pictures of churches on them. You can speak to June on your way out or any of the ACW members, and they'll be happy to help you. Thank you, Robert and Judy, choir, Harvey, servers, and thank you to all of you. It's been a real joy this year, and I hope you enjoy your hockey. <coughs> Our closing hymn is hymn number 146. One, four, six. <laughs>
service begins. I can't resist this, and I'm sure you'll agree. There's no point in him trying to cut off my sermon if he's going to let me hear. <laughs> Oh, I'll make stuff here.